Hello everyone, Nathrandir here and welcome to a new mini-series on my channel. This, my friends, is Dead Island Definitive Edition, a zombie survival horror role-playing game. I recommend that you check it out in a store if you're into these kinds of games. Anyway, this series will be about my own personal builds, which I recommend to others as well. I'll be going over each of the four characters, Sam B, Sean, Berna, and Logan. Their skills, the goods, the bads, and the uglies. I will have long intervals between each of the videos, so please be patient. As you can see in the title, this video will focus on those who want to reach level 60. Don't worry, I'll go over what you should invest into from the start as well. So, without much further ado, let's start the series with Logan, throwing expert, ex-all-pro quarterback, the jack of all trades. As you can see here, Logan's health lies at 100, speed at 100, and his stamina as low as 80, making it the lowest of them all. When it comes to his specialty, it's a throwing, obviously, but also one-handed weapons. Logan's position in the team, I would say, would be Horde Killer, as that fits him perfectly, especially with his fury and one certain skill from his combat tree. I will start the video by loading one of my semi-finished Logan builds. Oh man, I used to be on top of the world, brother. Okay, cool. There it is. Anyway, let's hop right into it. As you can see here, I almost finished this build. As you can see, I have only 4 points left, but that's because you can invest into whatever you like with those. That is why I keep this save. Alright, so the first skill you want to invest into is your Fury skill. Every single character has their own unique Fury. Logan's Fury states, On Fury, you can hit two enemies with one thrown weapon, and your throwing range is 15 meters. Keep in mind that to activate Fury, you have to fill a red bar, which is seen in your upper left corner, right there. To fill the red bar, you need to obviously kill enemies. The amount of rage, that will say the red bar, you get after killing an enemy, is not determined by what kind of enemy that you fight. It's determined by the amount. So whether you kill 10 thugs or 10 zombies, it doesn't really matter because the rage meter will be at the same amount. I experimented a little with rage and I came to a conclusion that it takes approximately 20 kills to make it full. And that's without the skills which I will be going over later in this video. The reason you picked this is because it's really nice to have. It's like a backup plan if you're in a pickle. The next skill you should invest into is Boomerang. Chance to retrieve thrown weapon. And this is a bio factor of 15%. As you can see here in this example, I take out my weapon, I throw it, and I wait for the red text saying boomerang right there. Back into the skill tree. After you've taken boomerang, you should go to the combat tree to get heavy hitter. Basically what this does, it makes you a little more effective with blunt weapons. And it also gives you a special attack. Using a blunt weapon, you can trigger a special attack if you press left mouse button while aiming for the enemy's head. These controls, however, might differ depending on your preferences. So that's good to know. After you put one point into each of these first skills, you should go a little bit down into the combat tree. But first I will be going over each of the three skills which comes next. So, Kicker. Increases critical hit chance when kicking. Critical hit chance up to 15%. Now, this might sound decent, but when you put into account that when an enemy falls on their back, you will have a 100% critical hit chance when you're kicking them. And kicks aren't that strong to begin with. Next skill, Fencer, increases damage with one-handed weapons. This is one of the skills which I spoke of that he focuses on, one-handed weapons. Now, the amount of 15% might sound kind of nice, but there are better stuff to find in this skill tree. So, let's wait with that skill until you reach a higher level. Third skill, Mass Driver, increases the throwing range of melee weapons up to 7.5 meters. 
This might sound a bit small to some of you, but I assure you it's a significant difference and it will definitely sometimes save your life, especially if Boomerang activates. So yes, put three points into this. Also a quick notice, you cannot respec into this game. I repeat, you cannot respec your skills. That will say reset your skill points to the amount when you started. So if you invest into something useless, you're gonna be stuck with it unless you want to create a whole new character and lose all of the weapons or trade them over. So yeah, that's good to know. After getting Mass Driver, I recommend to go back to survival just to get a certain skill here. The first skill, Drunken Master, increases damage while being drunk. Damage increased by 60%. Alcohol is very common, so this is very tempting to get, especially in the early game. Otherwise, it gets kind of obsolete when you do massive damage already without being drunk. I wouldn't really recommend this unless you like being drunk and see massive numbers when you are at a higher level. Second skill, Efficiency, decreases weapon upgrade cost. Upgrade cost minus 30%. That is not a problem since money pretty much comes in an infinite supply. And when we get to this skill, which we will be going over shortly, it will pretty much be useless. Now, onto the third skill. Deeper pockets increases the number of inventory slots. Put three points into this. You might ask, why? Well, you're gonna throw a lot of weapons, and if you don't retrieve them by boomerang, it might be good to have a backup supply with deeper pockets. So if you throw every single weapon into a thug or a single enemy, and they won't come back, that's kind of handy. And besides, more items means more items to sell. Also, it helps you to carry bullets by having weapons filled with ammo. Since we're early into the game, and throwing weapons also deals a big amount of damage already, as Boomerang won't help you every single time, so it's quite nice to have something like this, which we will be going over. That's why we will be going over the first skill here, Picklock allows opening of locks. You might have noticed that some chests around the map, like this one right here, makes you able to open those chests. Those chests have a higher chance of having better weapons. However, since it's such a small chance, I wouldn't recommend this skill as you can still find pretty good stuff outside of these chests. So unless you like farming or retrieving those very special and unique items, which are exceptionally rare, even in level 3 chests, I would not recommend this skill. Next skill. Conditioning. Increases stamina. Stamina increased by 30%. Conditioning is a great skill. Not only does it enable Logan to run a bit farther, but it also enables you to get to point A to point B a lot faster. How fast, do you ask? Well, without the point investments into conditioning, you can run for 16 seconds. However, like in this clip, you can run in a full 22 seconds, which is a huge difference if you want to get somewhere. On to the next skill, Scavenger. Chance to find a weapon in great condition. This is even worse. Great condition loot chance, 45%. Usually when I pick up a weapon, it's almost always about 90%. So I'd say that this is worse than efficiency. Do not get this. So if I don't want the two skills on the sides, guess what? I'll pick conditioning, as that helps me get to point A to point B a lot faster. After conditioning, you obviously need to get reliable boomerang. Chance to retrieve thrown weapon, now 30%. And a 1 in 3 chance to retrieve your thrown weapon? That is really handy, especially early game. So that's why I wanted to get down to this tree before heading back to the combat tree and getting those delicious skills. As you might remember, Mass Driver was the last skill we invested into the combat tree. Let's take a look at the three next skills. Maintenance. The condition of weapons deteriorates at a slower rate. The condition or durability of weapons is the white circular bar around your weapon icon which is seen in your inventory, weapon wheel, or your upper right corner. However, there's a good thing that you should know. When throwing weapons, the durability of them won't go down, unless you swing your weapon at an enemy. Thus, as the throwing expert, this makes maintenance pretty useless. 
So, on to the next skill. Frenzy. A kill increases damage for 5 seconds. Damage plus 30%. When throwing weapons, you deal more damage than you would when you swing them at enemies. That 30% boost after a kill helps your weaker weapons to one-shot or close to one-shot most common enemies. Which is really nice. On to the next skill. Flow decreases stamina cost with one-handed weapons. A bit like maintenance here, throwing weapons doesn't take down your weapon durability. Pretty much the same goes for flow. You don't use stamina when you throw a weapon. It's only when you swing a weapon at an enemy. So just like maintenance, it's pretty useless, especially on Logan. So that's why we're picking Frenzy. After that, we obviously have to take Sharp Apprentice and give us that small amount of boost on Sharp Weapons. Much like Heavy Hitter over here, Sharp Apprentice also gives us a special attack. Not only that, it also gives us the first stomp. This first stomp, however, is a slow 1-2 stomp, which locks you in a rather long animation and will most likely get you killed if you decide to use it with lots of enemies around. We'll get the second, better stomp if we decide to invest into Firearms Apprentice later in the game. Now we're close to one of the best tiers in the game. But just not yet, we still have to invest three points into one of these. Which one, you ask? Well, let's take a look at them. Mighty Throw. Increases damage with throwing. Throw damage plus 30%. That is big. That is something you want. That is something I recommend. Next skill. Aimed Shots. Increases firearms damage. Well, you should have at least one firearm in your inventory or your arsenal. But since you're gonna throw so far anyway with Mass Driver, Aim Shots is a pretty unnecessary boost, since it's so small and you'll most likely throw weapons anyway. It's not that much of a big deal, especially when it's only human enemies that use firearms, which forces you to use them as well. Next skill. Way of the Warrior increases critical hit chance with one-handed weapons. That's by 6% and in critical hit chance standards, that's pretty much. But it's nothing compared to a certain skill down here. So, just like Fencer over here, the Way of the Warrior you should not obtain until late game. Now to the tier we've all been waiting for. The best tier in the game in my opinion. So let's go over them all. Economical Throw. Aside from his fury right here. This is what makes Logan the horde killer of the team. Especially when paired with a single skill right here. Hitting an enemy with thrown weapons inflicts damage to nearby enemies. This damage is 30% of the original damage to the main target. This might not look like much, but when you apply the mighty throw with extra damage and a certain skill right here, you're gonna deal massive damage. On to the next skill. Shinobi, instant kill chance with thrown weapons. Works only on equal or lower level enemies. What it says on only equal or lower level enemies might make you think twice. But guess what? When you reach level 60, the enemies won't be able to scale above that. So before level 60, an enemy might be one level above you. But when you reach level 60, they won't be able to go past that level. So you always have a 9% chance of making an instant kill, if you're at max level. This skill has great synergy with economical throw, because the damage you deal to those enemies around the main target also gets the effect from Shinobi. So each of them that are damaged in the group have a 9% chance of getting killed instantly, which makes these two pretty much golden together. Enough of that, on to the next skill. Telling Blows increases critical hit chance with thrown weapons. Guess what? It's not 6%, it's 30%. I don't know if the developers meant for it to be this powerful, but yes, by all means, get this skill. So, 3 points into Telling Blows. Now, at this point, you should be approximately level 23, which still makes you very powerful. After getting Telling Blows, I recommend that you invest into Economical Throw by 3 points. This way, the overkill damage should make you be able to kill most common enemies and perhaps a special enemy, even if it's only 30%. Even though I spoke of Shinobi and Economical Throw being golden together, I recommend that you jump into the Fury Tree to retrieve a certain skill right here. Also, I forget to mention that Logan's Fury lasts only for 6 seconds, so make those seconds count. 
But first, let's go over the three skills available. Long shot increases throwing range on Fury. This is one of those skills which is just like Fencer and Way of the Warrior, which you shouldn't retrieve until late game, at least in my opinion. Sure, throwing range on Fury might sound pretty good and won't force you to move at that time when Fury is active. However, since you're gonna be pretty close to your enemy when you're activating Fury, this makes long shot not necessary at this time. So I guess long shot is pretty meh right now. Let's look at the next skill. Furious throw. Killing enemies with throws gains additional rage by 30%. This is great. This helps you get that rage back in no time. Next skill. One of the worst skills in this skill tree. Chance to inflict bleeding when throwing on fury. What bleeding does is that it applies an over time effect to an enemy and they start spewing out blood from different parts of their body. Unlike shock, poison and fire over time effects however, this over time effect doesn't make them flinch. Which doesn't really help you that much. Why is this so bad? Well, Fury does a huge amount of damage already, so you pretty much only need one to two throws, sometimes on rare occasions maybe three, which makes the overtime bleeding effect useless. So, we'll be going for Furious Throw. After that, go to True Bullseye. You can now hit three enemies with one thrown weapon on Fury. That is awesome! After getting True Bullseye, I recommend heading back into the combat tree to retrieve Shinobi. This way, you will have this golden wombo combo right here with Economical Throw, Shinobi and Telling Blows, which can down a group of enemies in an instant. Now, we're already dealing massive damage already, so it's not time for a Way of the Warrior nor Fencer just yet. That's why we're heading back towards the Survival Tree to retrieve this skill right here. But first, let's go over the skills. Fireproof, improved fire resistance. Fire resistance plus 45%. This is useless! Overtime effects only damages you when you're standing right on top of them or close to them. And not only that, they won't even linger. So unless you're close to the source of the fire, this is absolutely trash and useless. Never get this. On to the next skill. Custom maintenance. Increases durability of modified weapons by 30%. Just like maintenance over here, throwing weapons doesn't drain your durability, which makes this skill not useful at all. The third skill, Discipline. You gain additional health. Health plus three bars. As you can see there, that's quite a lot and it will help you survive by a big amount. So when we've got trash and something pretty much useless, what should we go for? It's obviously Discipline. After this, we've got a pretty interesting skill right here, but first we're gonna look at medicinal purposes. Enables health regeneration while being drunk. Alcohol is very common, so having a skill which makes a common item as effective as a health kit is extremely useful. Keep in mind, however, that unlike a med kit which heals you the right amount in an instant, medicinal purposes heals that amount over time, so just remember that. Now. Two points into this is more than enough to heal you back almost to full again. So only take two points, not three. Also, the reason why we went into the survival tree instead of the fury tree even further is because we're already dealing pretty massive damage with these three skills. And with Furious Throw, that already helps us out a lot. So right now, you want to focus on this tree to get Righteous Boomerang. Next skill. Appraiser. Chance to find an upgraded weapon. Just like efficiency, right here, you're gonna have a lot of money already. Especially with deeper pockets and even more if you invest it into picklock. So just like efficiency, Appraiser, it's not something you want. Third skill. Reflection. Chance to knock out enemies when receiving damage. Just like Shinobi here. Reflection only works on equal or lower level enemies. But as you remember, when you get to level 60, that won't really matter. But if a thug would like to slap you for whatever reason, Reflection will not work, even if it triggers. So this is a skill that I really like and recommend. However, it's got pretty tough competition with medicinal purposes. So just to get that small health kit, I recommend putting one point into med medicinal purposes and two points into Reflection 
to have a 1 in 5 chance to make your enemies fall on their back. After putting 3 points in total into this tier, you'll unlock Righteous Boomerang, which gives you a 50% chance of retrieving your thrown weapon. That is awesome, and that's why I love Logan, because seeing that red text saying Boomerang over and over again is so satisfying. After getting a Righteous Boomerang, I recommend going back to Medicinal Purposes to get one more point so that you have two points in total into this skill. Now, after getting those neat skills in the survival tree, I recommend heading back towards the Fury Tree. And the next three skills available are these. First one, Wings of Death. Chance to instantly kill enemies when throwing on Fury. Instant kill chance, 9% on Fury. Hey, remember grazing hits? You're gonna kill your enemies so fast that you barely won't notice if it activates or not. So do not get Wings of Death. Next skill. Battle Rage. Kills with one-handed weapons. Gain additional rage. Rage gain plus 18%. That is quite a lot and actually the best of the one-handed skills. So yeah, Battle Rage is very solid. However, it's got pretty tough competition in the next skill. Volatile. Decreases the amount of rage required to activate Fury. This is by a factor of 15%. So whether you're using throwables, two-handed weapons, or one-handed weapons, the amount of rage will always be lower by 15%. That is why we'll go with Volatile. After that, just take Deadeye Bullseye, only to see that massive horde go down in one to two throws. After investing into Deadeye Bullseye, I recommend taking Battle Rage. Rage gain plus 18% is the best of the four one-handed weapon skills. So yes, take this to get to Deadeye Bullseye even faster. Now we only have 10 points left. So what should we invest into? Remember the one-handed skills, Fencer and Way of the Warrior? The first one I would pick of the two is Way of the Warrior because increasing that critical hit chance gives you a higher chance to deal massive damage. After Way of the Warrior, by all means take Fencer. To deal even more damage, even without critical hits. Now we only have four skill points left, as you can see here in the upper right corner. There are four skills, which I recommend that you invest into at least one point. For example, you could take Drunken Master, only to see those massive numbers with that plus 60% boost in damage. But since you're already dealing a lot of damage and killing most enemies in one shot, I don't exactly recommend this skill. If you like farming, you could take Picklock and perhaps find some special legendary weapons. But it's such a small amount, so it's more or less torture for some people. But if you like farming that much, by all means, take it. The third skill is a bit miscellaneous. Firearms Apprentice. Basically what this does is that it makes you more effective with the guns. Even if it doesn't show it on an item card, like Sharp Apprentice for example, Firearms Apprentice also gives you that second faster stomp, which I mentioned earlier. This stomp only lasts for a single second, so it's a whole lot less risky to execute. So that's why it's amongst the last four skills on the list. The fourth one of them is Longshot. As I mentioned earlier, the throwing range on your Fury is increased by 7.5 meters, much like Mass Driver but only with your Fury. So with my recommendation, I would take Longshot and then one point into whatever you like, whether it's Log Pick, Drunken Master or Firearms Apprentice. The skill I would recommend the least would actually have to be Drunken Master, even if it's fun to run around while being drunk. It can get quite annoying for most people, so unless you want to wobble around and miss a doorway to safety while you have zombies on your tail, I wouldn't recommend Drunken Master all too much. So either put the last point into Picklock or Firearms Apprentice. In my case, I would take Firearms Apprentice, just to see those three last skills complete. So yeah, I guess this pretty much wraps up this video. So leave a like, comment and subscribe if you want more. And please feel free to share this video with others that you know play this game. So hopefully you enjoy this Logan build from Dead Island. And thank you all once again for watching. This has been Nathrandir. I don't care that my connection is lost.